Hello everybody, it's Aaron. Welcome to a tutorial. I got a request uh, for a tutorial on how to export items out of AE in a useful way. So I figured, let's see what I can do in 10 minutes or less. That's what I'm shooting for. I've already got some stuff set up. Uh, before we get into the export methods, I want to talk about importing a little because they kind of go together. A couple of ways to import things to your system. You can use an interface, which will interact with uh, pneumatic tubes from Red Power, if you have them, uh, build craft pipes. Uh, you can hook a tesseract on them, an item tesseract, or you can actually hook it straight up to a quarry. And everything will go in here. If I had anything in my inventory, uh, you can even interact. I think I'm in creative mode, so that won't work. But if I put some interfaces in my interface, they actually get sucked into the system. You can also use the interface to um, keep a certain number of items. And I don't think I have any of those in the system, so that's not going to work. But if you wanted to always keep one precision export bus in it, it will do that. And it will always keep one there. If I make it two, it'll always keep two there, so on so forth. I don't use it for this for this method, or I don't use this for anything, but it it is possible to use it to keep eight items always right, you know, right on the on the thing. You've also got your import buses. I typically use the precision, not the fuzzy import bus, on stack mode because I have this hooked up to an ender chest for, you know, mostly. And everything I put in there, I want it to get sucked out very quickly. So uh, let's take a bunch of drones and I'll just show you the difference between these two, these two buses here. The regular import bus, you cannot click or interface in any way. It's a basic import bus. one at a time the fuzzy or precision you put in stack mode obviously exactly what it sounds like stacks at a time empties the chest very quickly that's what I usually want it for so on to exporting and I'm not going to touch on the specifics or the differences between the fuzzy and precision import buses because we're going to go over right here with the export buses. The easiest way to de demonstrate the difference between the precision and fuzzy is with bees or damaged items. So I have a bunch of swords in here. Notice I've got six regular undamaged iron swords and I have quite a few that have various levels of damage and a bunch of other other random swords that are just in here. So the basic import bus works exactly like the precision import bus. Export bus, I always mix them up. The basic and the precision are the same in that they only moved an exact, exact like item. So if I put this iron sword here with this level of damage, this is the only one that is exactly like it. So it's the only thing that's going to get sucked out of the system. Whereas if I put a sword with no damage, all of the undamaged iron swords get put into the chest. So that works the same way this does, except this one will let you do more. You can do stack mode. You can set it to craft things if you want. Um, and you can turn it on and off with a redstone signal. So that's the precision. The fuzzy is a little bit different in that if we put an undamaged iron sword in there, we're still going to end up with all the undamaged iron swords, just like the precision export bus. But if I put a damaged iron sword in here, Every single damaged iron sword in my system is going to end up in this chest. 
So it disregards the level of damage. It's just if it is damaged, I'm going to put it in the chest. Notice if we put the undamaged swords back in here. They will not get sent to the chest. Only the undamaged swords. And this is take three. Something has happened in the first two, and now I got something on my mouse pad. So this is not my day. So it is very similar with bees. If we look at all our drones in here, the ones that stack are exactly alike. So these two are exactly alike. If I put them either in this basic export bus or the precision export bus, only this exact type of drone with the same traits and everything will get sent to the chest. Same thing if you're importing. It has to match exactly. Now we do have the fuzzy export bus now, which will export every single drone in the system is going to go to this chest right now. So this can be useful if you want to send all your extra drones to um, get melted into DNA or something. So you've got your apiary or alveary over here and you got your drones on auto cycle. Once you hit 64, all the excess goes into the system. You can then tell AE to export all of the excess drones to your um, DNA melter thingy. The gene pool, I believe it's called. So that's the difference between the fuzzy and the precision export and import buses. Notice that when I put the undamaged iron sword in there, it did not try to send any of the other swords. It only sent the iron one. So it is the same type of sword. It just, it ignores the metadata for like you know damage or whatever so those will come in very useful or come in very handy they can be very useful um, the other ways I use AE to export things are basically just to either feed machines with things or um, to craft things so I've got an interface up here if you make a pattern Say you want to make sand from cobblestone. You put cobble here, sand here, and then you encode. You get your pattern. Put your pattern in the interface here. And it has to be on the side of the machine that you would normally pipe the stuff into, which is the top for the macerator. So if we want sand from this, we go, hey, I want some sand. Let's get rid of this. Let's craft some sand. Give me... Give me 10 of them. It's going to send 10 cobblestone to this macerator and make us 10 sand. And that's a basic import bus, so it's not going to happen right away. So that is a way to have your system automatically make things for you on the fly. Like if I have a recipe that takes sand and I don't have any, if I have... Um, I don't even think I have to auto craft for that one. It'll actually just make it for me if I have the pattern in there. So let's say I want some glass and I think I do have some in the system. I have two stacks of glass in the system. I have this export bus and it doesn't matter if it's fuzzy or precision set to send sand to the furnace to make glass and it's a it's only supposed to do this when it gets a redstone signal. So I have this set up. When I drop below 64 glass, this should light up. And when it does, it'll turn this guy on. See, active with signal. Since this is set to move single items or craft, if I don't have any sand in my system, which I don't, if I take out all the glass, or if I drop it below 64, that level emitter, this is called a level emitter by the way, the level emitter turns on, this tries to send sand, there's none in the system, since it's set to move single items or craft, it'll actually send cobblestone to the macerator to automatically make sand, 
and then the sand gets kicked to the furnace. So it's the same kind of deal. If I put a pattern for glass, I'd have to actually put an interface up here. It would make it on the fly, but I can tell the system with the level emitter, hey, I always want 64 glass in the system. If I have less than that, I want you to emit a signal when the level's below that, and then it's going to kick this guy on, and he's going to send glass or send sand to get cooked in the glass. And then we put all this stuff in there, the level emitter turns off, because at that point we have enough. Uh, so if I did not have this level emitter, this thing would just work constantly, which we don't want, because we don't want all of our sand to necessarily get cooked in the glass. But there is an instance where you probably don't want a level emitter if you're running your uh, quarry. What you're going to want to do is probably put all your ores. I'll just grab a few of them. You want to put your ores in here. And unfortunately, in my testing, I have found that if you put one ore in a fuzzy export bus, it does not send every other ore to the thing. It only sends that one type of ore. So, unfortunately, you can't do it like that. And I better go ahead and make that active. And let's test that just for the hell of it. It already sent some tin. Notice that I only have copper in there right now, and there's still a bunch of ore in the system because it's not set up in the bus. So unfortunately, you still have to set up a rule for every type of ore, but that's not that big of a deal. Uh, it will work if you have both types of silver ore. You know how there are two. Let's make a stack of each. We're going to put one type of silver ore in there, but it should send all of it. We'll put in that stack first. See, it does work with these guys, but it doesn't work with the different types of ores. So there are a bunch of different ways that you can use these things um, in your world, but these are the main ways that I use them. Uh, so hopefully this helps if you have any specific questions or if I didn't cover anything because uh, I'm just really was trying to do the the practical uses for these things uh, but if you have any specific questions leave me a comment and I will do my best to answer them I also don't know if this will work without the Mac so let's um, try that right now before I end this thing I don't think it will But let's see. It does. So if you just want to make sand out of something uh, in your uh, machine, or if you want to make glass out of sand or whatever, um, you can definitely do this without the molecular assembler chamber. So that's good to know also, just a little tidbit. So that's going to do it. I hope you guys found this useful. Like I said, if you have any specific questions, uh, leave me a comment. I'll try to answer them the best that I can. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.